Hello and welcome to an Aviation Sim UK video. So today what we're going to be covering is we're going to be covering a little tutorial on how to run a sweatbox session. So if you a controller on Vatsim, then you probably know about sweatbox. You've probably been trained up on it, usually as an S1. If you've done your S2, then you'll probably have been trained up on it there as well. So what sweatbox is, is basically means the mentor can control what the student sees on their radar screen. So we can chuck in weird situations for the student. We can also have a session in a nice controlled environment. So if I'm trying to introduce the student into like the S2 training, then I usually do the first couple of sessions on Sweatbox, just so that they can get to grips about how to control, how to read the radar screen as well, because there is a big difference between being a ground controller and a tower controller on Vatsim. And it's just trying to help them transition from this S1 stage to this S2 stage. So, I'm going to be running it off of the live network, off of Sweat. I'm not going to be running it on Sweatbox, I'm going to be running it on my own computer. So I don't interfere with anyone else's training sessions. So, first things first, um, if you open up Euroscope in your normal way. Okay, first thing you need to do is you need to open up the actual radar screen and not the SMR. The reason why is because you can't control an altitude or anything like that if you're just going off of the SMR. So, I'm going to be doing this at Stancy because it's my training aerodrome. It's my favourite aerodrome, to be honest, and Gatwick. So, first things first, I'm going to open up Essex Combined Radar. And there's the usual noise of the sound of the login. Low people have changed it now because they found it annoying. So, <laughs> I need to update my UK controller plugin at some point. So, that's brought up my radar screen. Personal preference, I usually have it on the right hand side of my screen because, you know. Um, I just like that. And then, if you find the Euroscope icon on your taskbar, right click on it, open up Euroscope again. This time, we'll open up Stansted SMR. SMR is obviously the ground radar view, surface movement radar. Um, in real life, you only see anything on your radar screen. If it moves, if it's stationary, you don't really see it usually, which does cause problems, but you know. So, there you go, that's opened up. So, the first thing we need to make sure, okay, is we need to make sure that this radar screen, which you can see up here says Essex Radar 2, that needs to have a connect icon on it. And our standard SMR screen needs to have this proxy like box where you'd usually see connect. Okay, if it doesn't see that, then open up both the connection dialogues. Okay, on the left hand side, click stop proxy server. Okay, so that should be greyed out. On the right hand side in your Essex radar screen, click Start Proxy Server, and then it should work properly. Okay, so select connection mode, start sweatbox simulator session. Remember to click that, otherwise, you can't do your sweatbox because you don't have the taskbar to control with. Your call sign, so I'm at Stansted, so Echo Golf, Sierra Sierra, underscore M, underscore Tower. The M means mentor. Real name, certificate, and password needs to be filled in. Facility, well obviously I'm running tower. Rating, you have to be an S3 to run Sweatbox. Server, you'd select Sweatbox and connect to Vatsim, but I'm running it on local host, so I just put local host in as one word. And untick connect to Vatsim. Okay, that's always important if you're doing things that you don't want to go onto the Sweatbox server. Um, local host is the way to go. Okay. Um, find Euroscope FSD server in your Euroscope file directory in your documents section. Okay, and open up the same file that you want to run in your sweat box. Okay, and then click start server. Um, it's important to make sure that if you're running it on local host, untick connect to Vatsim. Range doesn't really matter. Scenario, I need to get mine as 2.2 because that's the standard one. I don't have more than one file. Okay, and then we click connect. Voice communication setup. Make sure that you do find SS, well in this case SSR. Um, it doesn't really matter about the channel now because obviously we don't really use it. Um, by ticking primary, it brings up your departure list. You can then untick it. I know. <laughs> but, you know, if you're controlling for primary position, then remember to tick primary. A lot of students don't do it and it does cause problems. Because the pilots don't actually see you, your frequency, which is very annoying. So, click the runway icon as usual, scroll down, find 
um, OPQRF standstead. Tip both the depths and the arrivals and then click OK. Um, because we're not live, we don't actually have any meters, so, you know, I'm just going to run off of 2-2. OK. And this does sometimes happen with the sign squawk code going a bit weird. I've set mine up, if you click on the S, so, I'd always recommend, this is going into a bit of your scope setup, which I'll go through at some other point. Uh, if you're assigned Squawk, I'd always recommend that on the left it's the UK Controller plugin uh, for Squawk Recycle General. And then you just left click on everything. Or oh, well, you should be able to. Oh, well, we'll go for the right hand side. Oh, yeah, because it's the direct connection one. Uh, see, even I get these things confused. So you just click on all of them and it just recycles all the squawks so that they're nice and not set and you can catch your student out. That's always a fun one to do. So, as you see, I always recommend having the SMR open because you can see all the core signs of the aircraft. It does make life easier. And then on the right hand side, you've got your radar screen. So, you've got this taskbar that you don't actually ever see anywhere else, okay? Um, I'm just doing this as a sweatbox tutorial for tower because there are other things you can do with approach like you can Alter their route and proceed send them direct to somewhere you can get them to hold as well and things like that So there are other things um, It's just it's easier just to do this for tower. That's usually where you need to learn your sweatbox skills at Okay, so you've got this little aircraft icon. Okay, so if you click that brings up this little taskbar. Okay, so here's a squawk that you want that you can so you can manually enter a squawk, say one, two, three, four, press enter. It does take a little while for it to refresh. Squawking one, two, three, four. If you click this little plus icon, that's the emergency squawk. Your squawk's seven seven zero zero. And the best bit is his name comes up in red. It's always fun. Lots of communication squawks seven six zero zero when he decides to do that or not. There we are, but no changing color. Bit of a bad thing, but hey ho. And then you've got this little tick with the box, which means it'll squawk properly. Again, it, it does take a while for them to refresh this. <laughs> there you go. Okay. And then you've got Squawk Standby, which means that you, you can get him to Squawk Standby at the moment. That's because he's a little dot and not moving. Um, none of these buttons really matter that I can figure out. Um, yeah, the big red X, you can delete that aircraft. So that's good if you've got a lot of aircraft on. If you've got aircraft coming inbound, you don't really want them. Or you've got a missed approach, you can delete them. Or you can have them go around, it doesn't really matter. So, then you've got the landing icon. Um, have we got an aircraft inbound? Yes. So Ryanair right 45 Sierra Lima, I can get him to land on runway 22 by clicking that button. So this little button here means that he'll land. This one with the zeros means he'll do touch and go. So I always recommend with any aircraft, if you're doing, I will go through this with a circuit example. Okay, so I would always recommend that you click the landing button first, then when they establish, then you click the touch and go button. Or you've got missed approach altitude at different heights, so you've got... 50 feet, 100 feet, 150 feet, 200 feet. Okay. Um, then you've got... So then I have to go back down. Click on German 2379er. This button here. You've got direct, which don't really... Never use. You've got new, which means new tax instructions. Hold. Um, we don't use can't. can't. you got pushback. you got something else. Oh, you've got the manual taxi dialogue. Um, so you can send them right five degrees or whatever, up up by ten foot. So there is there is all of that that you can do. Um, follow me means that he'll follow an aircraft. Um, FM one, not sure. TB me is taxi behind me. Okay, this is important because if you have an aircraft. At the hold and another aircraft approaching him, you need to do the TB me, otherwise they crash into each other and it gets very messy. Okay, and um, then you've got your speed, so you can change the taxi speed, but usually you just leave it on 25. You've got the takeoff buttons, you've got line up, takeoff. You've got your emergency ones, so landing gear right, no, sorry, left landing gear, right landing gear, nose landing gear. They don't really matter, like engine, engine one stall. 
engine one fire. It's a bit annoying because you can't actually see what's going on, which is annoying, but, you know. And then... Um, got your light buttons. So, nav, landing lights, taxi lights, wing lights. Basically, <laughs> none of these work because we can't do much with them. Okay. So... <sighs> What I'll do is I'll run through a little example of what I'd usually do with a student. Okay, so if I click play, so actually no, let's not click play. I've just thought of something. So right now, four five Sierra Lima, he's in the air. Okay, if you hover over him, it comes up with all of these things. But I need to do Euroscope tutorial as well in the tower. So you've obviously got zero six nine. That's his altitude. The down arrow means he's descending. SS his destination. If it's like A one, then that's his exit point. 360, that is his assigned altitude that comes up on the student's radar screen. So he, 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 for some reason, be assigned 360, so it's like he's coming down. A30, that is the altitude. So if the student said in a go around, run F450 or Lima go around, so you can go around, acknowledge. Uh, uh, climbing 19 altitude, like. 4,000 feet, then you just click A4000 and it will change. There is a little bit of a delay, but it does change his, his like, what he's doing. Um, assigned heading, you can put in there whatever heading you want him to do. If you want him to turn right or left, you can also click heading and drag it. Um, yeah, and ASP is his airspeed. So you can send him slower or faster, depending on what you want to do. And that N268 N is his speed with regards to the ground. Okay, that's how you read radar tag. So, right, so yeah, so let's say we're going to taxi someone. Whoops, he's going to follow that guy. That, that could be interesting. Um, so, let's say, okay. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so by pressing, <laughs> taxiing behind, Chen Wings 2379 is now going to taxi behind, and that's going to be annoying. Let me see if I can get him to stop. Let's hold him. So, it's on jet to brother puppy, call up student clearance and stuff like that. And you click on the aircraft icon, press the tick. Or don't, and get the student to like, tell you. And then you can push him back. So you click the push button, left click, his route, left click, right click. He'll now start pushing back now. Okay. As you can see on my ground screen, he is moving backwards. I hope. Make sure it says pushing back. If it says crash, then he crashed, and your aircraft won't move if they crashed, which becomes very fun when you have mentors trying to taxi Golf Echo Charlie out, and he crashes into Golf Echo Echo because they don't know how to run sweatbox properly. Hey ho. Right. So yeah, Ryanair 45 Sierra Lima's inbound. Usually when I whenever they come up on the screen, I'll click the land icon. Because then they establish. If you don't press it, they don't establish. <laughs> it's as simple as that. So, so control everything from the right hand. Well, in my case, the right hand screen, which is straight up. It could be your left if you do it the other way around. Personal preference doesn't matter. So, Tom Jet Two Bar of Pup is now holding position. So, I call up my student, request ready for taxi. New, I'm taking forwards. You have to be accurate with these as well, because they do actually follow the routes. Um, obviously, in real life, you could probably just press the taxi buttons of the taxiways, and then he follows them. So, yeah, you don't have to be too specific, because obviously this is that sim. And um, probably hold Romeo 1. If you told the German wings to follow him, then we click follow me, and then we click our German wings guy. Oh, sorry, our Thompson, our Thompson guy. So he's taxiing at 2-5, the German wings will be following him. Following me instructions are always brilliant, but just remember to actually, like, be specific with your instructions. Or well, it depends if he's actually going to move, I don't think he will. Nah, I'll just taxi him out as well. Because he's not moving, alright. So yeah, you just click new there. There. That remember your TB me taxi behind, and I can't remember where my Thompson's gone. He's like around here somewhere. Right. 
Huh. That's why. Okay, so he'll taxi behind so he won't crash into him. Um, you can have lots of aircraft going at once. It doesn't really matter. It happens. Um, yep. Um, let's say we're, we're feeling a little bit circuity today. So maybe Golf Aircraft requested to taxi for circuits. Take him holding point uniform. Um, let's speed this up because, you know. So, <laughs> it's going to get interesting because I've got to take him off and stuff, you know. But, Sweatbox basically means you can run whatever you want. You can control the situation. Um, it does become very fun when you do that. So, the amount of times as well when you're making reports and people are like, and you're like, oh, we haven't covered departures, and they're like, ah, but we have though, we've had nine on departure, it's like, no, it's VFR, learn the facts, type thing. So, go for Echo Echo, I, <laughs> usually I just put 1,500 in this box here, because otherwise he climbs to 7,000 feet, and just decides, either, usually, he'll decide to fly over North Hampshire, um, the North Hampstead. So it does become interesting. So, maybe I call Tower up, sending to be running for 5 Sierra Lima, saying I'm established, ILS 2 2. Remember, each of these lines at Stansted is 2 miles, so he's 2, 4, 6, 8, 9 miles out, you know. Um, Golf Echo Echo, if I wanted to take him off, um, we click on the little takeoff thing, line up, button. He will cut the grass. As well as you probably witness, he will probably likely cut the grass, cut up the grass, or he might be good today for once. It depends. Turns out a feeling. So yeah, it's just as simple as that. He'll line up, you know. You click the takeoff button. He takes off. It's really weird. Um, heading one two six. You can actually just change that to two two zero. Fly runway heading or not. I oh, know that's his current heading at the moment. <laughs> so obviously I'm not perfect at sweatbox. I usually they usually do weird things when they get in the air type thing. But you know well, in this case of yeah. He takes off. Remember I had a student who sat there and went, I just guessed his altitude. Look on the radar screen, get it open, see his altitude. One thousand six hundred. Okay, read it, <laughs> learn it. Okay, in theory, as soon as that app arrow is there, he's taken off from the runway. Oh, it's actually flying 222 for once. So, we'll climb maintain 1,500 feet. You can slow the aircraft down as well manually when they've established, but it doesn't really matter. So, then, Golf Echo will probably be told to report downwind if the student does his body's told. So, you just Click on AHDG, draw a little line, usually um, in the opposite direction, parallel to the runway, so for the downwind, 040 in this case, and you'll start turning left heading 040, it's amazing what you can do. Okay, and he'll, he'll just turn, it's easy, if you right click you can actually see the turn happening, um, yeah, it does. It, you can do a lot with sweatbox, and you can throw in situations that students aren't too familiar with. You can do zone transits, you can do zone departures and arrivals. A lot of VFR. Sweatbox is, is really good for VFR because you can actually simulate what the pilot's going to do, and you know you're going to get some traffic. And it's good. It has its downfalls, obviously, as well, because, you know, you're talking to a mentor who knows what he's doing, not some pilot on Vatsim who doesn't have a clue what they're doing type thing. So, it has its ups and downs, but, you know, I'm just going to get rid of 4-5 Sierra Lima, because, otherwise, I've got to taxi him to stand. But, obviously, I wouldn't do that in a mentoring session. Let's get the airspeed up to, like, high, because I want to try and get this done soon. Because I don't want you to be sitting here waiting, going, well, why is he taking so long? And I can't speed up the sweat blocks. <sighs> Ugh. So he'll be on downwind. Usually, when I call up students saying that I'm downwind, touch and go, or doubt, or in this case, it'd be downwind full stop, I'll descend him down to a thousand feet for my reference so that I know what's happening, type thing. 
So in this case, you could probably get the Thompson out with some traffic information. You could have gotten him out earlier, but you know. Um, and then German Wings, RSIBA, you know. All those fun and games. So, yeah, there is a lot you can do. It's kind of fun to do Sweatbox, I'm not going to lie. It is good. You can call up using all different voices. That's what they do in real life as well. They call up with all different, like, voices and stuff. And, like, <laughs> have a lot of stuff. You'll have, like, a German wings with a German pilot. They can, like, test you to see if you can determine, like, whether the pilot's hypoxic or not and stuff like that. So, one of the downsides with Sweatbox is... For the aircraft to establish, you need quite a long final, usually about four miles. Which, actually, thinking about it, is probably about realistic. Pilots usually do a three mile base. I'll line up behind, German wings. Bang. Caution weight turbulence. Um, you can. Oh, I forgot to say. You can also simulate who's online. So, up on the screen, but this doesn't work all the time. Some of the time it's wrong. You see these two boxes, if you click on there, then you have loads of controllers that you can simulate. So you'd have ground and delivery, I don't know why you'd have that, but, you know, SX Approach, you could have Stansted Director, sorry, SX Radar, not SX Approach. It's because of the APP, I'm just confused. TC North's usually on, TC South Central's always on, because there's Jamie Payne. You have Bandbox to confuse the student about what South Central is and what, can, and what Bandbox is. He's at 1 1, you can take the German wings off. There's so much you can do, it is really good. And you probably hand the Thompson off to, what was he on? He was on Nugbo, so you go off to Stansted Director type thing. Golf Echo Echo, oh. There we are. Take him around for an intercept. Really poor vectoring, but you know, he's VFR, it's his responsibility. I can get rid of him because I've got a VFR and I don't really want to be like, oh. <laughs> Let's worry about crashes. I, I probably vectored him out a bit too far for Golf Echo Echo, but you know. Um, landing when he's about to intercept, I can click Land 2-2 and he'll follow the ILS. If he doesn't work, then he's missed the localizer. And you got to start all over again. Usually by telling the student that he's going around because he can't do anything. So as I said, um, about aircraft leaving the UK control zone, Hotel 4, that's one of the exit points. I can't remember where because I don't know them off the top of my head. But... I could probably find out because it'd be the one that's on the border of the UK FIR, which is CapEx. Or Law. Yeah. No, Lawku, sorry. No. The Goba is the Exit Point Hotel 2. So it is, it is useful reference for controllers about where they're going to leave. You've got Hotel 4 as. Sorry, that was Hotel 4. You've got Delta 1 as well, which is over in Dover's side. Which is. Yeah. Pitez. So it does work. Nope, wrong button. I need to find my German wings so I can get rid of his um, screen. And look, see, Golf Echo Echo has just failed to establish. Luckily, he's on an 8 mile final, so. <laughs> so, yeah, it, to be honest, I'm usually with VFR, I'm a lot better than this, but I usually give them a bit wider of crosswind. So, yeah, it does work. And you just establish him, do whatever you want to do with him. Um, I'm not going to lie. At this point, he's vain there. He's probably a, he's, he's a Vatsim pilot. But, yeah. And then you can press little pause button up here to pause it. Play, pause, whatever. Um, make sure you've got the up-to-date version, otherwise everyone gets annoyed. Because it pauses every swipe box ever. So, that was a really poor example of Golf Echo Echo. <laughs> Usually I'm a lot better. It's just, I uh, my eye's not on the ball because it's not a proper mentoring session. This is just a tutorial to show you what's going on type thing. So, with that, I'm going to probably wrap up the, wrap this up and leave it there. Because... Why not? For some reason, I'm a supervisor on here. Ooh. Not sure why, because that says tower, but hey-ho. You know. Oh, hang on. 
He's a supervisor for everything. I've somehow been made a supervisor overnight, which I haven't, but yeah. So, with that, let's wrap this up, finish this off. Okay, so there you go. There's a video on how to run a sweatbox session. Very brief introduction. You usually pick up your skills after a while. Um, it does take a little bit of a while to get your habit. Um, know when to call aircraft on downwind and call them for base and so you establish them on final. But that's all the fun. You just learn that with experience. Obviously, the more experience you get, the more complex a sweatbox session you can run as well. So there you are. That's how to run a sweatbox session. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you've got any comments about this, if you're ever struggling with a sweatbox session, come find me on um, what's it, Teamspeak. Message me on Slack. Um, I'm Nathaniel Lawrence, so you can find me. Not Nathaniel Leff, as everyone confuses me with. Okay. Um, ask, feel free to ask any questions. Find us on Facebook as well. And ask any questions on there. Aviation Sim UK. And we will get back to you in a timely manner. If you like these videos, feel free to subscribe. Hit that bell icon. Then you know when we release these videos. And it makes life a lot more easier for you. Because some of these videos might be important for you. You might be a town student learning how to control. You might be a mentor learning how to sweat box. Things like that. We, and a lot of the feedback we've got is positive about people being interested in all of these things. So let us know if you are interested. Let us know if you've got any video ideas as well. Because some some of us are quite old and not very imaginative. And we don't know what you want to see. So let us know. And remember, aviate navigate and communicate. Take care. Bye.